All right. Hello, everybody. I am Ryan Nosira, and I am back here with a video for you guys on a really cool topic that uh, if you've done any kind of trading before, I bet this has happened to you um, because I know it's happened to me. And I've been, you know, even if you haven't been at this that long, it's just something you probably have dealt with. Um, and I was having a conversation with a student the other day. Uh, and um, I was making some video answers to some of the problems he was having, having with uh, his trades. Uh, and I found a consistency there. And I was like, well, let me send this to uh, some of my other coaching students. I always get permission before I send, you know, use names or anything like that. Um, but uh, so I was doing a video response for him using yesterday's market. Um, and I made some really good calls. And um, so uh, what I thought I would do here is actually just share with you guys. And what he was struggling with is that he would get into a trade, right? So he gets into a trade and he's up, you know, let's say he gets in at one point and he expects to make, you know, let's say 500 bucks on the trade. Okay. So he's up just around two, let's say, you know, he specifically said he's up around 170 and then he thinks it's on its way up. And when that happens, then the stock turns over and, or the, whatever he was trading stock or future turns over and hits stop loss. Now, that's just the nature of this business of trading. You're going to have something start on its way to going really well. And then, you know, uh, a mentor of mine said, crap the bed. And that's just life. You know, it's just the, the life we chose here. Um, but I gave him some pretty cool tips that I think uh, will <clears throat> help just about all of you who uh, might be trading. And, um, uh, you know, the answer is like, you know, I'm a chartist. I, I trade off the charts. I don't read news. Um, I try and stay out of news or stay out of the way of news. So, the way I trade, hopefully you can adapt to some of the stuff you're doing. Um, <coughs> and, excuse me. And hopefully it helps you. But uh, one of the first things I talked about is what, what really powers uh, momentum. <coughs> and for me, uh, sorry, guys. <coughs> All right. For me, what powers momentum is really like a – the origin of the momentum that you're looking at. And let me just give you an example here, right? So most Momo players are looking for like big candles or whatever you're looking for, right? So way I look at momentum is that I want to see the momentum behind my trade, right? And the way I do it is uh, you'll see here, this is crude oil, but this is very easily could have just been any ABC stock or anything like that. So I, I identified this for him as a possible trade, um, you'll see price kind of left there pretty strong when a real fine distance, right? Um, when it touched in my video, I said, when there's a big sell off like this, you know, kind of get out a little bit early and, you know, take capture the profits sooner. So, um, that was the answer. But one of the things telling me, uh, that this was a good trade was really the origin of this move, this momentum, when there's good momentum behind your trade that you saw in front of you, Right. So for here, I saw this big move here and I said, I bet I can capture, you know, a good portion of that. You know, I really only wanted a third of this to make money. So that's fine. So the smaller I the bigger the move and the smaller you need to make money, that's going to add up, I promise you. Um, so that was my first instinct uh, was to find what was behind here. Um, and then the second thing I saw was that little trade right here. I kind of identified it already for him um, where crude made this move. Right. And uh, you'll see here another one where price kind of paused and then just dropped like a rock right into this area. Right. Now, this trade, I my suggestion was to be cautious. It wound up working out beautifully, much better than I thought it was going to. But, you know, either way, if you took my advice and got out of it and, you know, you, you made three to one risk reward. Now, if you got into this trade on the short side, that easily let's just get the numbers or let me confirm the numbers, really, I should say. Right. Okay. So that's that right at like two to one risk reward. Uh, not bad for a big bullish move into this. I think that's a nice payday. Um, you know, it's $300 risk to make 600. That's that, 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 that'll work. <laughs> um, and then the next thing I did was look at the overall market and, uh, I got to move some of this stuff out of here because we were doing some day trades and stuff. And, uh, the next piece of advice I gave him, 
was not to look at the lower time frame. I do some day trading, right? I, I love it. It's where I made my first amount of money. Um, I think it works for uh, for me. I think it works for a bunch of my students who day trade more than they do uh, some of the swing longer term stuff. Um, and uh, I find it works. But if you don't want to be tied to a computer or you – uh, are trying to make a certain amount of money with a very small amount of money. One of the reasons, one of the ways to deal with that is that you look at the, the, the high time frame charts, right? So even I don't, you'll notice I trade with no indicators, right? I use just the chart. So this is just price action, right? Now, even if you do trade with indicators, bump up that time frame to like, you know, if you're looking at five minute charts and you want to be trading a lot less, well, go ahead and look at one hour, two hour. You'll see this is a two hour chart of the S&P 500. And you'll see again that pause and then this big breakout here. Price didn't, uh, excuse me, the market didn't necessarily like last night's debate and it just drove right down right here, right? You know, and touch here and uh, look at this move out of here. I did not get a dollar of this move. Um, I had a little 10 minute chart in here. I got some of this, um, which is pretty cool. But in my email, you'll see I say eliminate about uh, uh, half the time you need to, to trade. You know, if you're you're taking a bunch of trades in a day, one of the easiest ways to do it is just to bump up that time frame. Um, no, that's from the lesson. Uh, from right here, you'll see this is the S&P 500. Make sure you're looking at like a two-hour chart, four-hour chart. Um, you'll get less trades, but you will get much higher quality trades. Um, look right here. You see there was a sell-off at the, you know, the last couple hours of the market, right? Okay, well, guess what happened? See that little pause right there, that momentum downward shift that it took? It basically just history repeated itself, touching right there. Let me put a circle there. Basically, that's where you would get into your trade, and you don't even need that whole move. I mean, this is a relatively small risk trade uh, dollar-wise for the, uh, the what we're looking at. I mean, look at that. That's perfect. Right. Three to one is right there. And it went much further. My style of trading is just to get what I can out of it and or get what I want out of it and then move on. I'm not looking for home runs. I have a, the occasional home run, um, not the way I trade. Right. So like I was talking to you guys about the double up program uh, last uh, couple weeks uh, for Founder Circle. Um, that has nothing to do with home runs. That has something to do more to do with kind of what I'm showing you here. And it's really just taking um, less trades, but of higher quality and um, keeping the risk relatively low. But you're going for every one dollar you risk. You are minimum making three to one. That's how that, I'll, anybody who I talk to understands it. And I'll, I'll maybe do a video on it eventually. But right now, I just want to show you some of the stuff I did here. Um, the next question is he thought maybe he stayed in the trade too long, right? So Greg was thinking, okay, I'm in this trade. I'm in it for a couple hours. Should I have gotten out of it in the first hour? Should I have gotten out of it in the first few minutes? Now, for me, I really guided by just what, however long it takes for the eater to hit my stop out or to hit my profit target. Minus any news announcements, um, I don't care so much how long I'm in a trade, but there is a reasonable amount of time to be in a trade. You'll see here on this S&P trade on the short side, let's look here, right? Let me make this a little bit bigger, right? This is a two hour chart, right? So this move took one, two, three, four. The entire move took about eight hours, right? Now, once it made its way in there, you know, this trade basically took, should I break it? Let's just, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna get this exactly right. I don't wanna waste too much of your time. But this trade, you if you got into it, you were in this trade to get to your three to one risk reward, probably about two hours, right? Um, you know, that's pretty good. If you start to be in trades too long without any kind of follow through, you know, depending on the size of your account and what your goals are, you start to realize if you're in a higher time frame, they might take a few hours. They might take a whole day. You might need to be in that for 24 hours, right? Um, depending on the time frame. Like a two-hour chart, you really don't want to be in that more than a day. In my experience, sometimes you have, there's reasons why it may take longer. Let's just say if you're not a pro at this just yet, don't stay in anything that you got into uh, off of a, a two-hour chart too long. Um, but that's like one little tactic he, he was trying to use, should I not be in it that long? But instead of just guessing, 
use the time frame you're looking at to get into your trade. So if you're trading Bollinger Bands, right, or whatever, I hope you guys learned some of the stuff I'm teaching in the, in these videos or you've done my, uh, my boot camp or one of my coaching sessions, something like that, great. But if you haven't, um, just that little change of using the time frame to tell you how long you should be in the trade. So, like, if you're taking a day trade off of, like, a five-minute chart, um, I had some garbage company up here. Um, no, I don't really want to get into this chart too much. All right. Um, but let's just say here's a 10-minute chart, right? And let's say you were going to buy a pullback to this area here, right? Okay, this is a 10-minute chart. You're not going to be in that trade longer. You don't want to be in that trade longer now, and nothing good is going to come from that, okay? But when you're using, a, like, a two-hour or four-hour chart, you're going to need to be in that for a little while, you know, for it to work. So if you're in that for, you know, four hours, don't panic. But if you're in that for a day, you know, maybe consider moving your stop to break even, stop to break even plus um, a small profit, depending on your goals and, and what yours in your trading plan. Um that's a really good tactic to use instead of just guessing like oh, I was in that trade too long. Let the time frame guide how long you're in something. Um, so just a quick review um, to 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 what know what powers momentum, right? It should be in a trade. It should be momentum that goes quite a distance, right? Like this this here. Notice how far this goes, right? So that led to the when the momentum reversed and touched this area again. It's like a, a touch. Of, you know, Mitch has a good adage where it's like touching a hot stove. You get your hand right off of it. You notice this touched and then boom, right? Um, did you? Did I know it was going to go this far? No. I like I said. I just want to. I I want to get what I uh, want out of a trade, and then after that, I don't care. Um, you know, I'll scale out. I have a lot of strategies for that. That's not important for you guys right now. But um, um, the next thing you do that will really cut down the amount of work you need to do is uh just bumping up your time frame if you're trading off of five if especially if you're not making money that might sometimes that's the answer is you're looking at like you know a five minute chart ten minute chart something like that so if you bump up the time frame you know you're going to increase the risk some but you're going to increase your war reward quite a bit i mean look at these two trades here this touched here look how far that went i mean that's a not quite two thousand dollars but it's like a sixteen hundred dollar win on oil um this sitting here right here is about three uh what did i say that went to this is about a six hundred dollar win on the short side here so that's pretty good um those are some good trades and i made some really good calls in the stupid video i was just giving an answer to my student with and you know that, luckily it worked yeah i'm glad it worked for everybody i just wanted uh, him to get a lesson because this is what i do um when someone has a question for me uh is uh try and really give really good answers to either reply in text but sometimes that doesn't uh, isn't as good as just like really breaking something down in a step-by-step -step fashion via video um so uh also let me see he said it was okay if i share the video with you guys if you guys would like to see my actual original answer you'll get to see the before and after of what all these trades look like before they hit um oh i didn't know i left that up there uh, or we could just watch one of them. Okay, so here's... All right, hey guys, um, this is video two. It is now almost 2.30. Uh, the last video recorded at one. Um, and it was Can I mute this? Question from a there we um, go. All right, you guys know the drill, but let's just fast forward to... Uh, there's crude oil touching that level right there, right? Here's the actual chart beforehand. I kind of mapped this out for him because it's... Part of what I do when I put when I answer questions and stuff, right? I said, here's the I gave him. He knows all the rules. Here's the trade before. Uh, sorry, guys. Where's my mouse? There it is. Okay. So there's the trade beforehand, and we're waiting for it to come down here. So I'm saying, you know, A, B, C, D in one of the videos. If you guys would like to see video one and two of my answers to him. And uh, that's a little day trade I had on. I made a couple of bucks off the trade, but nothing like what it, I went of doing in the analysis. I would have. Okay, hold on. Let's fast forward to the. 10 minute, I say that 10 minute level is going to get ripped through. Yeah, I, I'm, I like to, oh, that's when my computer froze up. I like to make sure I always have the before and after pictures. I like to say, anyone can just say, hey, I made this trade and it went really well. I like to have the before picture and the after picture. So the videos really help a lot with that. Instead of you guys just looking at, um, oh, that's cool. All right, let me get back to that weekly level in a second. Basically, here's that, uh, see, can I make this bigger? Full screen. 
Okay, guys. All right, so this is a video of a video, right? That's, a, there we go, right? Notice here, ES, two hour chart. See that level there? Price, the, that's the momentum just kind of going straight down, right? That's where price was when I made the video. And then you'll see, hold on, I'll make this up uh, there, right? And there it is touching. Here, let me put this together just so you guys can see. Now I feel comfortable having the before and after pictures. See that? Yes, two hour. There's the touch. Yes, in the video, like, like I said, nothing happened, right? Beforehand, we were down here somewhere and then boom, right? So pretty cool. Um, if you guys would like to see the, the training videos that I send uh, some of my students, I don't want to include it in here, but I, I want you guys to want to watch it. So uh, reply to this, hit reply to this email and just say, could send me these training videos and I'll send you these two training videos. Um, I have them just on password protected loom, loom links. Um, it's really easy to do. Just hit, hit you'll just click a link and watch. Um, so uh, go ahead and let me know if this was helpful. Um, and if you'd like to see those videos, like I said, please reply. Um, I love your questions and comments and you know arguments and stuff about trading. So that's pretty cool. If you'd like to see my video answers to my student Greg, go right ahead and reply, and I will send them to you. But uh, uh, the other thing I want to do is if you would guys would do me a favor, and when you open Open this up on YouTube. If you would give this a like and a, a subscribe to the video, you'll get notified via YouTube instead of me going to uh, uh, send you guys an email. I really appreciate it. So if you would smash that like button and uh, then subscribe to my videos, I would really appreciate that. Um, for now, uh, like I said, signing off and uh, talk to you guys soon. Bye.